Hello, welcome to another exciting tutorial. I'm Chris Bailey and I'm a Blender YouTuber over at C Bailey Film. Today I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie. We're gonna be taking a look at five more modeling tools that you need to create anything in Blender. Now don't forget to check out cgcookie.com. You can start a free trial today and get a taste of all the amazing benefits you get. Okay, so to begin making this old fashioned joystick, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna enter edit mode and I'm gonna have everything selected. I'm gonna hit S to scale and Z just to scale it down on the Z plane. I'm gonna scale it up a little bit just to make it a tad bigger. Then I'm gonna select this top face right here and we're gonna use the first tool we're gonna talk about today, the inset tool. Now the inset tool is really easy. You just hit I to inset when you have a face selected and it will basically inset that face. It's exactly the same as hitting E to extrude and then S to scale. So you get the same results. Just saving you a couple of key presses. It's a pretty good time saver. So we can just bring this down a little bit and this is gonna be our inner section where we're gonna create the circle for our uh, joystick. Now we need a few more edges here. Um, so we're gonna have to cut this thing up. So hit Control R and we're gonna create a couple of loop cuts, maybe four. And uh, I'll do that again the other way across. So I'll create four loop cuts. I hit escape before I move my mouse so that they just lock into the center point. And then I'm gonna select the center face here and hit control plus to expand my selection. Now I've got this grid of faces, but I wanna turn this into a circle. So I'll bring up the, the two sphere tool by hitting F3 and typing two sphere. And I'm gonna drag my mouse and it's gonna spherize all of those points. So it's gonna try and turn it into a sphere. Now, because they all live on the same Z plane, it hasn't been able to spherize it uh, on the up and down plane. So it's just stretched everything out flat across the, uh, the X and Y plane. Now we don't need these faces anymore. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those. And this will just leave us with a nice little edge ring that's a fairly decent circle shape. Now it's never gonna be quite perfect. All these edges aren't exactly the same length, so it can't give me an exact circle. So if I wanna have a perfect circle in the middle of this geometry, we can use this as the starting point. And then what we can do, if we switch to vertex mode, make sure our cursor is right in the center of it all. If it's not, we could just hit Shift S, cursor to selected, and that'll put the cursor right in the middle of what we have selected. Then we can hit Shift A in edit mode and bring up a circle. Now this just brings up a piece of mesh within our mesh uh, that's a circle of vertices. And then we can make some adjustments here. Now we need to make sure that the number of vertices are equal our circle and this extra circle that we've just made. So I'm gonna count these up and make sure they match. You can also use the rotation and radius tools just to make sure it lines up decently well. And then what I can do is I can hold down Shift, Alt, and click this ring. So now I have both of these rings selected. Now we can use the next tool we're gonna to talk about, the bridge edge loop tool. So I'm gonna hit F3 and type in bridge edge loops, and there it is. The bridge edge loops tool basically takes two edges, two continuous loops of edges. It doesn't have to be a loop actually, it can just be a string of edges. As long as both groups of edges have the same number of edges, uh, then it will create faces bridging them. So we can see here it's done that for us and it's bridged these guys nicely. Now I've got a perfect circle surrounded by a okay circle. Now if I wanna match these up perfectly, what I can actually do is alt click to select this edge loop and then I can double tap G to slide the edges. Double tapping G is like grabbing, but it forces all the vertexes that you're grabbing to stay locked to the edge that they're on. So it slides up and down the edge. So I can slide all these edges in just like this. And now they're lined up perfectly with this outer circle. Now, if I hit S to scale, it's gonna scale them out, lock it on the Z plane. Just hold down Shift Z or Shift X or Shift Y. It'll lock it onto, it'll not include that cardinal direction in the, the scale that you wanna do. So I'm gonna scale this out and you can see now I've got a, a nice perfect circle. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'll hit E to extrude and I'll grab Z, E again, and I'll go ahead and make the sort of ribbed joystick um, support section. Just bring up this main joystick center section, I'll hit E to extrude the final bit just to bring this top in and then to close it off, I'll use the grid fill tool that we talked about last time. Now, I feel like this joystick's a little small compared to the base, so I'd like to make it bigger. Easiest way to do that is if I hit Control Plus to expand my selection until it includes all of this, I can now hit S to scale, and then I don't want to scale on the Z because you see it's getting you know strange, I, but if I hit Shift Z, it's going to turn off the Z direction, and I'll just be scaling along the Y and the X. So now I can get that size to look just right. Awesome. Now I wanna go ahead and get my model looking a little bit better as I continue progressing with it. And again, modifiers are a great way to do that. I'm gonna add in a bevel modifier to get started. 
And I'll set my segments to two just to give them a little bit of a nicer edge. And then what I want to do is I'm going to come to this little green triangle and this time I'm going to turn on auto smooth in the normals. Now this is a really great trick for getting a uh, nice looking smooth geometry without having to have too many faces. If you right click on your geometry now and shade smooth, it's going to start using the auto smooth feed feature. So basically what happens is wherever a, an edge is uh, sharp enough, so it's greater than 30 degrees in this case, uh, we'll shade it as if it's a hard edge. Anything less than that will be shaded as a smooth edge. And now to round off these uh, edges that I want things to be really smooth, I'll use the subdivision surface modifier. Now, right now the bevel modifier is creating bevels for every edge and I don't want that. Uh, so I'm gonna set my limit method to angle. And now it's only gonna bevel any edge that's got an angle of 30 degrees or greater. Now the next thing I wanna do is create this button section down at the bottom. And in order to do that, I wanna have sort of a straight section that comes off of this rounded base and I want it to go into a circular shape. So first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna create another edge loop. And I'm gonna drag it out so it matches the side of the square and then I'm gonna scale in a little bit. Just kind of find the right point where uh, I'm gonna have the, the box kind of in. So I like this right here. I'm gonna bring this one in a little bit on the X and this one down a little bit on the Y just to try and straighten these up a little bit. And then what I wanna do is I have a circular shape right here. So I need to insert a circle in this section of the square. So in order to do that, I'm gonna select these three points and I'm gonna shift S, I'm gonna go cursor to selected. That'll put my cursor right in between these three points. Now what I can do is shift A, circle, and I can turn down the number of vertices so that it's not too big. I don't wanna have too many to work with. All right, so I've gone with eight points and now I'm just positioning and scaling it just so that it matches up roughly with these vertices here. Cause I'm just thinking about how is it gonna fit within this section? So, okay, I like that. I feel like that's gonna work pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select these two points. I'm gonna hit merge uh, at center. It's gonna merge these vertices together. Select these, merge at center as well. And then what I can do is I can come here and I can select this vertex and I can delete it. And that's also gonna get rid of all these faces in this area. So what I can do now is I come over here and if I create an edge loop to try and add some more uh, edges into this to, to be able to fill out these faces, you can see creating an edge loop now is actually gonna create an edge loop across my entire surface, my whole object, which I don't want that. That's gonna create a lot of unnecessary faces. So what I can do instead is I can break up that edge loop by coming down here and just deleting one of these faces temporarily. Now, if I go into do edge mode, it's just gonna do an edge loop that's just that one face. Now this is gonna create an ingon, which you can see creates some, you know, it'll create some weird uh, properties, but because it's a flat surface, it will hide it within the geometry, which is what I, got, what I want. Now I'm gonna create this edge loop here. I'll just set this up so I can connect this here and then I'll connect this here. And then let's see, I'll make one more edge loop right here. Now I'm gonna connect all these uh, points up and I'm gonna create polygons using a new tool called the fill tool. Now the fill tool is basically really simple to use. You, collect, you select a certain number of vertexes and you hit F and it will fill those faces for you and turn it into a polygon. So I'm just gonna keep selecting sets of four and hitting F to fill. And there we go, so I've filled out those polygons. You can also go ahead and fill in this hole down at the bottom that I've created. So I'm gonna select all of these and hit F as well. Now, even though this is an ingon, so it's got more than four uh, sides, it's got n number of sides, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six sides in this particular case. This usually creates uh, rendering artifacts and can be really weird if it's deformed, but because it's on a flat surface, surrounded by other flat surfaces, it hides the ingon, so the shading works. Uh, Blender knows what to do with it and it doesn't really create too many artifacts. You can kind of see a little bit of something if I Move around here, there's a bit of shading that's a little different there, but it's pretty minimal. Now the next tool we're gonna to talk about is the snapping tool. The snapping tool is really useful. You can use it by turning on the little magnet up here, and then you can select all these different ways to snap. You can snap onto edges or faces or volumes or just use an increment. I usually keep mine on vertex. And uh, the hotkey is shift tab. It's really useful. I, I turn it on and you can snap to other vertexes. So I've got this one selected. Now if I hit G with snapping turned on and bring my mouse close to this other vertex, this one's gonna snap right onto it. Now if I hit A to select all, M to merge by distance, it's gonna merge that vertex up. And now it's gonna be one continuous uh, connected piece of geometry. Now what I can do is I can select these guys here and hit F to fill. 
Now what I can do is I can select this edge loop. I can hit E to extrude and S to scale, bring it in, and I can go ahead and make the, actually before I make the button, I go ahead and make the raised area. So I'm gonna select these faces right here. And then I'll shift, I'll alt shift click this loop here to create, select this whole loop. And then I'll let E to extrude and I'll grab it on the Z and just bring this group up just a little bit like that. Then I'll come back here, I'll select this edge right down on the inside and I'll hit E to extrude, I'll scale it in, E again, grab Z to lock it on the Z and I'll bring it up, not too high, uh, E to extrude, bring it in and then F3 grid fill, bam. Now I'm still getting some bevel from uh, my bevel, so I need to turn up my angle. I'll turn it up to like 75, that's probably good enough. All right, now to finish this off, I'm just gonna select these outer edges right out here, and I'll hit Control B to bevel, and I'll just roll my mouse just to get some extra subdivisions in there. Uh, not many, just a few, because I want my subdivision surface to do the work. And then um, I'll also select the outer ring here, and uh, I might need a little bit more room in between this. Let's see if I just bevel this a little bit. I don't want these uh, vertices to be intersecting. So just to kind of create just a little bit of extra bevel on that section there. And then what I can do is I can come down here and I can do a control R to create a loop cut. And then I can switch to transparent mode, go to the side view, double tap A to deselect all, and then B to box select this bottom section. And I can scale that down like so. Uh, in fact, what I can do is I can even come to my faces here and I can hit E to extrude and scale and shift Z and just scale this section in so that it's actually a bit of a shelf on the outside, which looks pretty cool. Um, now I need to fix up these faces, of course. So I can just select all these guys. I'll just go to the center one and just control plus scale these ones in and maybe like one more little edge in here I could hit control B to bevel this drag my mouse wheel just to turn it down a touch and then E to extrude and scale just to bring it in a little bit of an edge there now last thing we could do is we could come in and we could create some edge loops uh, here and turn off snapping and just bring these guys up a bit so that they're more rounded Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Hit the like button if you did, and don't forget to leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel so you can find out when we launch new tutorials every week. Stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.